Yeah. Um, it wasn't obviously ideal for me, but it was it was nice to be with the boys, and then um, we had to make the decision, obviously, to, to go back and focus on getting the uncle prepared and ready. Um, and obviously, I've been lucky enough now to be called in again, so hopefully better luck this time. And had you got a call from, the, I think Angle went to one of your games, did he speak to you after that game? Or? Yeah, um, he came to one of the games um, previous to getting called up and uh, we had a little conversation, um, but it still wasn't uh, in uh, 100%, so uh, it was nice to, to get that call up. And, like, it's obviously a position where Ireland have a lot of options, maybe in another era, playing rugby right in the championship, he would have been in before now. Have you? Have you felt kind of frustrated at the kind of lack of opportunities or just put it down to the competition that's there? Yes, yeah, obviously very strong competition in, in all positions. Um, but obviously I'm aware in the centre half position as well that there's um, guys playing at top levels and week in and week out in the Premier League. So uh, you know, that's the level I hope to get to. Um, but also you know, hopefully you know, I add something different to the squad um, and hopefully you know, I stay in here and, and, and can show that. Mark. Hi. Um, I just want to ask you about your sort of formative years as, as <coughs> in the fence. Um, you came through Arsenal, so you know expected to be a really classy football uh, defender, which we've seen uh, coming through your underage. You showed aspects of that. Um, then drawn into the championship, I suppose. Was it a complete uh, change to the scene, or, and is it? I suppose have those years then really set you up for what role the Irish band was looking for? Yeah, it's obviously completely different. Um, underage football, um, youth football, it's uh, it can be a little bit false. Um, I was lucky to obviously go out on loan pretty early under uh, when I was 19 up to Ipswich. Again, big club, playing good football. So I've always had that uh, in, in the background, but there's, there's different roles and different responsibilities that come with playing in the Championship. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure. Um, managers want you to do different things. So um, you know, I'd like to think that I've... Uh, array of different um, skill sets now um, not only just fancy on the ball you know, you know that is it's nice to do but ultimately I'm a defender so I've got to be able to stop it from going in the back of the net but I suppose does that give you the confidence then though like, because the manager spoke before about defenders needing to know when it's they can step into that midfield role when there's space after running if there's three on one or something they can just step in and, and push on is that something that you enjoy doing yeah, definitely. Look, um, I enjoy getting on the ball, like like we all do. That's, that's why we play the sport. Um, so, look, I, I'm I'm happy to do any role that the gaffer wants me to do. Um, but as I said, I think it's important that we we're, we're solid and we have a nice foundation to then build on. I don't always believe everything I read on the Wikipedia page, but it says you've got your family of. Uh, Long bowling links. Is that, a, is that <laughs> true, or is that something that you partake in? I imagine it's something that might. Uh, how to take your mind off football if, if yeah look I can, I can never get away from these questions but yeah my uh, my dad plays lawn bowls and so does my uh, older brother so it's uh, it's been in the family for a while now um, in fact my older brother's over in Hong Kong at the minute playing so um, it's been a big part of my family and it's, uh, it's a completely different sport as you can imagine to football but again it's still they play at high level so um, you know it's something that um, I'm proud of them both and um, you know it's, it's it's a nice part of the fact, a nice sport to be a part of actually it's a nice community and uh, um, it's obviously something completely different. And Mark, how is the excuse me? How is the lifestyle of an international long bowls player change from different from the lifestyle of a football? <laughs> um, believe it or not, not much different. Um, not not the way we are as a family and and uh, how I've been brought up. So. Uh, no, look, in terms of the actual um, sport, it's completely different, but the fundamentals of being a high-level athlete and uh, it's pretty much the same. There's a lot of dedication that goes into it, so, um, you know, it's uh, fair play to them and, and um, you know, they've been in a for fortunate position to play play for their country as well. And more on topic, I know, <coughs> sorry, Sam, we were talking about there was a video session with the manager this morning. What's he stressing ahead of the game on Thursday? I think obviously we need to get into that, that winning culture, that winning mentality. I think it's important for everyone involved. Um, get back to doing the basics right. But as, as I mentioned there, doing the, the fundamentals, the basics well. Um, give a nice platform for everyone to, to build on and, and, and the fans to get behind. Mark, um, when Cardiff sold you during the summer, your manager gave it quite complimentary words about you, but he did mention you didn't think your distribution was great. Um, would you agree with that? Is that something 
feel can be improved if you do agree with it or maybe yeah, look, I'm, I'm not a perfect player, so there's obviously going to be things that I need to work on. Um, there's certainly more things in just distribution that I'd like to work on. If I was sat here and say I was perfect, then um, I'd be lying to you. But um, no, definitely distribution is something I I do I do feel I'm I'm good at in terms of variation and, and long 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 distance passes, short passing. Um, as as we mentioned there before from my uh, academy days in Arsenal and growing up through. Through that, seeing the, seeing the top level players um, being involved in that, you can't get away with um, not being tied on the ball. So uh, it's something that obviously uh, everyone can work on. And as the higher up you go, the the more demand it is, the more the demand there is for you to play and get on the ball. But um, as I said to you, my, my main role is to defend. And just on that, you're, the influence of me and Arteta on you. I know you played a bit of pre-season. Like, what would you have taken from him? I think it was more. You know the the high, the players. Uh, that's world class level, as you can see. You know that the, they're they're now flying and yeah, they've got the the culture right there. Um, but that's the demand he he brings on the players. Um, training. It's, it's there's no there's no hiding. There's no getting away. There's no half heartedness in in training. It's 100 percent all the time. Um, and that's something obviously I carry through through myself and in, in training. Yeah. On, on that, would you have had many deals with Brady? Yeah, Liam was a big part of uh, my academy days at Arsenal. Um, we uh, we got on well, and he was obviously a big influence f- for me. And um, obviously, being an Irish heritage as well, it was it was nice to have him there. Um, and uh, yeah, he was he was a big role, and um, it was nice mm-hmm. to have him around when I was younger. I think uh, that was self-explanatory for me. <laughs> Um, I was always into every sport to be honest, but uh, yeah, no, football was always for me. I'm just wondering what kind of influence would you have? You mentioned earlier that we kind of had the culture and what he demands. Would he have kind of stress certain points to you as your problem? I think I was quite fortunate when I was younger to be in a, an environment where there was a lot of demand on the youngsters in terms of you know discipline, um, hard work, and um, we didn't have all the luxuries that some of the academies have now and even Arsenal you know when I was when I first joined Arsenal it wasn't wasn't as uh, as luxurious as it is now um, I've said a few years where they changed it all up um, but it was very much you know head down work um, which you know is is um, pretty telling of a, an Irish Irish player What was it like at Arsenal when you started I mean, from your age group in terms of players you brought on to make a career who else is Irish we had a good age group, to be to be fair. With um, 2001 age group, 2000 2001 age group was was a good age group. We had some really good boys. The majority of them are still in football, um, but a higher profile players would be someone like Bakayo Saka, Emil Smith Rowe. You know, they were my age group. Um, a little bit older, Eddie Nketiah, um, Reese Nelson. So they're all playing Premier League clubs and thriving. So you know, that's something obviously that. I would like to get to as well, but you know, there's other boys in my age group that are now playing in Championship League One. Um, so everyone's floating around. So I was fortunate to have a good, good age group actually. Was Saka always one of those players that you could tell from a very young age was, was going to go on the career that he's had? Yeah, I think uh, he was. He's obviously a very intelligent guy. He worked hard and um, he took his opportunities well. He was uh, he was always a top top player. So um, you now he deserves everything that's come towards him. Per Mertesacker obviously is a big role at Arsenal, but had too much contact with him. He's obviously a great centre-back in the day. Yeah, me and, me and Per had a good relationship, actually. Um, he helped me a lot, and um, I learned a lot off him. He was he came in as academy manager a little bit, bit later after Liam Brady left, and, and um, yeah, he was he was a good role model for me, and we still keep in contact right. to the, what, today. What sort of things would have been saying? No, I think he, he was very much... Um, <coughs> Obviously, you know, he probably got a lot of um, criticism a lot of the time, but he was such a good player. He won so much, um, playing for Arsenal, Germany, um, such a high level. But I think just the fundamentals and the basics that he 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 did was 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 why he got the degree he did, and and um, you know his personality as a leader um, was a big thing that I I tried to tried to take from him. What sort of atmosphere did you leave at Luton over the weekend? Yeah, obviously it's not been going well for us at the minute. Um, this has probably come at a good time just to sort of refresh, clear the head and focus on something else. 
Um, but we've got a big task to, do, to get back to when, um, when this is all over. So there's a lot of question marks about the manager at the moment and, and his future. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, that's, that's not for me to say. I, I can't comment on uh, the manager's situation, but all I can focus on is how we're performing um, and we know that we're not performing well enough at the minute, so uh, we need to take responsibility for that and then whatever happens from that happens. It's football. Hey, Mark, I know we'll go back into your life story again here, but you, you have positions on one side of your family, is that right? Is it real? Yeah, well, music again is part of uh, my family. I had two two cousins who were musicians, and my dad's side is uh, is very much into that. Um, I enjoy that as well as a, as a downtime. Talk about relaxing and getting my mind off football. Music's um, probably the biggest part of that for me. Yeah, you play the piano, is that right? Uh, a little bit of piano, mostly guitar at the minute. Um, but yeah, I love it just as a downtime and just sort of play along and <coughs> chill, really. Yeah, like is that a good thing to have in football, just to have some release away from it? I think it's the most important thing to have some sort of release. Um, it's very demanding football, it's very full on. It can be tough, obviously, it's ups and downs, but to, to have something to go home to and relax and switch off is probably the most important thing for, for any player. Was that something that started during the pandemic for you? Was there a long-term injury before or something? Was that the yeah, to be fair, the injuries have... have um, I've maybe learned a lot about myself and and how to how to deal with that side of it. Um, I was very I was probably too much of a perfectionist and uh, and um, so so focused on the football that that it was actually unhealthy in terms of getting injured and trying to get back too quickly or trying to focus on that too much and it didn't help actually. So I found having another thing to focus on, whether it was music, whether it was family, whether it was friends, whether it was some sort of activity. Um, really helped to switch off and um, and help me in, on the pitch actually. Yeah, because I know you like you were at Arsenal since you were ten. It's a long time to be at a, a big club, and I guess when that comes to an end, like sometimes people really struggle, like going away from their first club. Does it help that you had some perspective maybe at that stage? Yeah, I think I was very fortunate to have the the family and friends around me that uh, kept me kept me grounded and uh, and supported me. So. Um, I was always uh, a player that wanted to play first team football at a young age, so as soon as I could, um, obviously injuries restricted me a little bit, but as soon as I could, I wanted to get out and play uh, men's first team football. And I was very fortunate to go to Ipswich, um, big club, a lot of expectation, so um, that was really important for me and I learned a lot in um, those couple of years. Uh, Mark, um, previous Ireland manager, some of them weren't that keen on the guitar playing from their players during camp. Have you had the guitar in? <laughs> no, no, my guitar playing stays in my room and that's about it. So, uh, no, it's, uh, it's something I just enjoy doing and playing along at home and just chilling really. You can get Sammy to introduce you to Ed Sheeran. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be nice actually. I'm going to speak to him after. Get a few guitars in for maybe. Any uh, last questions? No, just check, Mark. Is your father John? Yes. And your brother's Tom? Yes. Yeah, and your, your father was Gary? Yes. Was he wearing the cup final yesterday? Sorry? Was he wearing the cup final? Yeah, yeah, well, actually, yeah. Um, we, um, I've got a few few mates uh, over there as well, and uh, they were they were aware, so unfortunately, it didn't quite go well. their way, did it? But. No. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 of course. I'm just checking that. And who's over in Hong Kong at the moment now? Is it, is Tom, it? Tom, my older brother, yeah. yeah. My father and him are quite good parents, they spend a lot together. Yeah, yeah, they've been successful. They've been successful in, in uh, the national competitions and, and things. So, uh, obviously, it's a relatively low key, uh, un, unpublished book, probably in terms of you know, make people know about it or it's not on TV too much. But um, it's it's uh, it's fun to play and it's harder than you think. I've only played myself. Though. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. How'd you get on? Uh, not very good. Uh, <laughs> we had a couple few ends. One last thing I was to say to you, did your dad move over to England when he was young for the team? Sorry? Your father from Derry, he must have moved over when he was younger. Yeah, so he moved over when he was, I can't remember the age, but I think it was for, for university or yeah, uh, for schooling. So uh, he met my mum over there and they, and they stayed over. And you settled Slough, was that the hometown? Yeah, yeah. So Slough is where um, I'm based at the minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.